Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and of course this is Shackleton. Now, in this video, and probably in the next one or two, I'm going to talk all about lightning. Because, um, you know, there's a big question out as to whether lightning will increase in frequency uh, under climate change. And uh, one school of thought is that the amount, the amount of lightning strikes, the flashes per square kilometer, uh, those numbers are proportional to something called the CAPE, which stands for Convective Available Potential Energy. It's a way we can measure how the atmosphere is pre-charged. And uh, if there's a trigger starting storms, these storms can gain a lot of energy if the CAPE is very high. So if you multiply the CAPE by the actual amount of rainfall, then lightning flashes uh, per, per unit area seem to correlate to that, and that will increase under climate change. So if you use that sort of theory, then that shows that for every degree Celsius of warming, we could expect 12% uh, more lightning. Now, there's another school of thought that looks at the ice um, in the, in the uh, upper atmospheric clouds. And uh, the ice rubbing together uh, causes friction, and the friction uh, charge, causes charge separation within the clouds. And uh, that's required for, for lightning. And that factor then depends more on the ice state of the atmosphere and with warming. Um, so over the US, um, that um, theory would say there's gonna be more lightning. Uh, similar numbers, I think something like eight to 15% increase in lightning um, per degree Celsius. But in areas like the tropics, um, if they get much, much warmer, there'll be less ice in the cloud. So you could argue that there, there'll be less lightning. So I'm going to talk about all of these sort of features. I've been meaning to uh, do a video for the last few days, but I'm um, I'm reading a, a book about anti-gravity, fascinating book about anti-gravity, and it's almost impossible to put down. So anyway, um, so it's floating in the air somewhere. Um, okay, so... Um, Lightning's been in the news recently, okay, in a number of different uh, articles for different reasons. One of them is there's been a lot of deaths in India recently, a lot of lightning strikes, uh, you know, 100 deaths in, in, in a, within a few days. And I'll talk about that. India's uh, hit hard by lightning. There's over 2,000 deaths per year, uh, every year since 2005. Um, 30 in the U.S., roughly, 3 in the U.K. Um, in India, they have the monsoon rains from June to September, and it covers large swaths, widespread amounts of land. Lots of people work outside. The warnings aren't, systems aren't great. Um, so there's lots of deaths there. So I'll talk about that. The World um, Meteorological Organization, the WMO, um, reported that there were a few new records set with lightning. Okay, uh, so the greatest extent of lightning, cloud to cloud lightning, um, so that's within the clouds. One lightning burst traveled 709 kilometers, which is crazy, uh, blowing away the previous record of 321 kilometers. And there was also the greatest uh, duration time of of uh, lightning again cloud to cloud lightning 16.73 seconds and the previous record was 7.74 seconds so i'll talk a little bit about that um, and also in 2019 there were lightning strikes up in the arctic very very strange there was um, dozens to hundreds of lightning strikes uh, near the north pole in the arctic in fact, they came within about 500 kilometers or 300 miles of the North Pole. 
very, very strange. Some of the lightning strikes were actually over the sea ice as well. And you think, well, how can that happen? I mean, the, you need, you need uh, moisture going up and convection. You know, you, I mean, lightning is typically a, um, you know, it's a warm weather phenomena. So having it in the Arctic period is very unusual. Having it over the sea ice in the Arctic is, is just absurd. It's totally absurd. Um, not only that, but of course the tropopause is much lower in the Arctic. It's uh, typically about seven kilometers uh, high in the Arctic. The mean over the planet is about 11 kilometers. And in the tropics, which are warm, of course, there's a lot of vertical lift and the tropopause, which is the upper part, the border between the troposphere and the stratosphere, is about 17 kilometers high. So you can see how you can get a lot of vertical cloud movement in, you know, the tropics and, you know, in, um, you know, mid latitudes. But in the Arctic, seven kilometers high, that doesn't leave you much space for uh, a cumulonimbus type cloud to form and for lightning to be generated. So that's a very, very uh, unusual thing. I mean, the tropopause is basically the lid on convection clouds. So when we see a cumulonimbus storm cloud, you see the anvil. The anvil is the overturning of the anvil. Oh, my, my shoulder is a bit sore from, from playing tennis. I'm playing with my 20-year-old uh, and uh, managing to beat him most times so far, but it, he's getting better quickly. He's a badminton player, not a tennis player, but anyway. Um, so, yeah, so very, very unusual. So um, I'm going to talk all about some of these unusual characteristics of lightning. I'll talk about how it's formed. I'll talk about how it's uh, changing and what we can expect with climate change and some of the consequences of that. Because, of course, more lightning and lightning up in the Arctic, well, lightning can set forests on fire. And if it's in the Arctic, it can set the tundra and permafrost on fire, lightning strikes on the ground. And there, there's lots more of more, there's more and more wildfires because if lightning is, is increasing. Also, lightning generates NOx, nit nitri nitrogen, oxygen, X, X oxygen. So NO, NOx, so like NO or NO2, things like that. And uh, it, th those can then react with uh, things like methane, et cetera. So there's chemistry going on. A lot of, a lot of chemicals, transient chemicals, charged particles, um, ions, et cetera, are generated in lightning bursts. And those have a big impact. Uh, it can also generate lots of ozone and affect that balance. So I'm going to talk about all of these things. Uh, but, um, you know, so. Um, and I think I mentioned a while ago, I was looking at doing some stand-up comedy, going to some clubs, but then the virus hit, so that went down the side. So I'll practice a couple things with you guys. Um, and also one of my aspirations is to do some TikTok videos. So please, uh, you know, I got to learn some dance moves or something to do that. I don't know, try to do some climate change TikTok videos. Maybe it's a crazy idea, but anyway, I'm thinking of it. But um, so here, so I'll, I'll I'll just practice a couple things on you here. You can groan all you you know if you want. But nineteen got into a fight with twenty, and twenty one. Okay, so I don't know. <laughs> How do hockey players stay cool by sitting next to the fans? What falls in winter but never lands on the ground? Um, I'm not talking about Virga, talking about the temperature. Anyway, I know, I know it's really bad. It, let, let, me get, let me get into my lightning discussion here before I have to uh, end this video and start another one. Okay, so Shackleton's been a good sport. Okay, so I'll come back here. So. My website, paulbeckwith.net, please check it out. Uh, lately, I've been talking about the effects of the um, uh, crop failures, a stuck jet stream, uh, persistent stuck creating um, heat waves in, say, 
North America, Europe, Asia concurrently causing crop failures and basically mayhem. So th that was my last few videos. And of course, if you're following me on Twitter, great. At Paul H. Beckwith, I tweet out loads of stuff. You might have heard of Schellenberger's uh, op-ed, which is actually an op-ad for his book. And, uh, you know, how it's... Uh, um, I haven't critiqued it, but many other people have. I usually leave it to other people to critique, uh, you know, climate deniers or, you know, not necessarily climate deniers, but people who deny how serious uh, abrupt climate change is. And uh, Facebook, uh, lots of... Uh, Lots of stuff going on here. Oh, this was an interesting thing. Uh, there's a Chalk Hill figure that they thought was prehistoric. And it's about 180 feet long here. And it's got a compass in the middle. I don't know if that's pointing north. And uh, it turns out that it may be only six or 700 years old instead of a few thousand years old by identifying the the uh, snails that are in the ground material to sketch the outline. This is on a hill and it's quite famous in Britain. And apparently, you know, locals, uh, you know, local couples, uh, if they have trouble conceiving a child, they go and they sleep in the middle of this thing for the night. I don't know that that's the uh, that's what they say anyway. So I don't know if it points north, but anyway, uh, that's I, I do post uh, mostly climate stuff and renewable energy stuff, but also, you know, some humor and uh, interesting things on both Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. OK, so this article was from a few weeks ago. Lightning kills more than 100 people in northern India. OK, uh, there were dozens of lightning strikes across two states and, and uh, more than 100 people died, 83 in one state and 20 in, in another state. So lightning strikes are common in India during heavy monsoon rains and the rain and thunderstorms causes widespread damage to trees and property. Um, okay, so they tell people, you know, stay inside, don't go out. You know, a lot of people work outside and the warnings aren't great. People, lots of people have cell phones and there are warnings on the cell phones, but people don't generally carry them when they are out in the fields working. Um, so it's always a problem in India. Um, more than 2,300 people were killed by lightning in India in 2018 alone. Uh, according to the National Crime Records Bureau, a funny organiza government organization to keep track of lightning deaths. At least 2,000 people have died in lightning strikes every year since 2005 in India. And a large number of people work outdoors in India compared to other parts of the world, which makes them more vulnerable. Okay, uh, a couple things, you know, reminders. If you're out there in lightning strikes, seek shelter inside a large building or a car. Get out of wide open spaces away from exposed hilltops. So down lower, not on hilltops, but in valleys. If you've got nowhere to shelter, make yourself as small a target as possible by crouching down with your feet together, hands on your knees, head tucked in, and I guess you're praying that you're not hit. And if your hair stands up and gets all frizzy, you're probably in trouble. Don't shelter beneath tall or isolated trees. If you're on the water, get to the shore and off wide open beaches as quickly as possible so you're not the highest thing in, in a local area. Okay, so... So this is, uh, you know, lightning speed of the news recently for this article. Now, uh, one of the links to the previous article was that there was a record 36,749 lightning strikes in, 13, in a 13 hour time period. This is a huge number of lightning strikes. Um, and this was in, this was a couple of years ago, April, 2018. And, you know, the result of extreme weather patterns. Now, the monsoon is June, June to September normally, so this was pre-monsoon. And in some states, there's lightning very common in these states before the monsoon. So the season typically begins in June and lasts till September in this particular region. Um, sees increased lightning activity before the monsoon begins. Okay, so thank you for listening, and I'll continue um, this in another video.
Thanks again.